needs a few more hours of sleep. Yeah. What are you, uh, Red Eye? Did you Red Eye? We did No. We didn't get it. Oh, we're supposed to be quiet, aren't we? Here we go. We're about to go. Too late. <laughs> Good Friday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and thank you kindly for joining us on Real Talk with Keith Smith. This show, anywhere you get your social media and podcasting content, and today's show is very, very, very one, very much one I've been looking forward to with Keith Smith back in the house. You will see him in about 10 seconds, sun-kissed and fresh from St. Martin, 38th or 39th wedding anniversary. 38th. His 38th wedding anniversary, he just uh, celebrated with his better seven eights, the fabulous Jonas Smith. We also have Woody Fincham in the house. I found out moments ago that Woody Fincham was a talented chef at one time before becoming arguably the top appraiser in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Judah Wickhauer behind the camera. Let's go to the studio shot and then a three shot. First we say good morning. Keith Smith. Good morning. Good morning. Is that what this is? Is it morning? Don't it's know. Morning. <laughs> no, I mean, isn't St. Martin on the same time schedule? A total of time, same time schedule. We just didn't get in until 3.30 in the morning. So <laughs> we're a little, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, got to get this caffeine rolling to get, get going. Maybe I have to go over to the bar to kind Did you bring some rum home? I did. I'll oh, tell you, amazing. I'll tell you how. We should have had some. How late. You forgot it. I didn't forget it. I was just trying to get up and get out the door and maybe do a little bit of data because it's a real estate show on that stuff. But so <clears throat> we just came from eating really well for a couple of weeks, and we're very blessed to be able to do that. And uh, some of our uh, the friends that we stay with, they're chefs and they own two French restaurants. Oh, nice. So, <clears throat> what is your favorite meal to make? Mm. If you've got nothing but time, what is your favorite meal to make? That's like picking your favorite child. Um, I mean, I do a lot of brisket lately. Everybody really likes. I'm not a big fan of brisket one way or the other, but uh, got a smoker during COVID and like every. Not a fan of brisket. No, I, I, it's okay. I can eat it, but it's just you know. Why not? It's a little rich. Yeah, you yeah. know, a lot of fat. Yeah. Um, but I know. I guess I don't know. Let me think about that for a second, Keith. I'll give you an so, answer here in a minute. Yeah, so I, I, I learned from my chef friend, that we, family friend, that they're like family. We, we you know, we've just been going to the same place for 13 years. Uh, he taught me how to make an actual omelet, a real French omelet. It's hard to do. It is really hard to do. The Inner Little Washington up in Rappahannock County, most people know about it. It's one of the, it's one of the first American restaurants to ever get Michelin stars. Yeah. And Patrick O'Connell, the chef there, is just, he's, you know, reworked the whole uh, culinary scene. Um, that's their test for you if you want to go there and do your externship out of culinary school. Yeah. And if you can't I, do a French omelet, they will not hire you. Unbelievable. <clears throat> and and um, I can tell you after two weeks, I didn't make it. <laughs> and and he would he would he was very kind, but he kind of pushed me out of the way <laughs> and put together an omelet and said, "Here, eat this." But uh, how about Woody Fitchum's favorite chef-related or food-related content, TV show, movie, anything like that? I think the the biggest thing in the zeitgeist out there would probably be Bourdain's No Reservations. Yeah, um, miss that guy immensely. Um, I mean, meant a lot to me in culinary school. I've you know. Uh, seen him talk a couple of times. You know he's doing his, his uh, speaking tours. Just you know, phenomenal outlook. And he makes the world smaller. You know with what he was doing because he, he food's all about you know uh, being collegial and yeah. and and sitting with people. So uh, it really opens up things. I think. Well, I'll, I'll get. Do you on. have a favorite, Keith? Uh, favorite. You know what? I've been watching the Steve Tucci. Well. Oh, uh, Stanley Tucci? Yeah. yeah Stanley yeah. Tucci. Excuse me. Stanley Tucci. Yeah. Uh, you know, my Italian side of me kind of got a little excited about yeah, it's it. It's a good show. <clears throat> it's a good show, and, and he does these often beaten path um, uh, regions, right? Mm -hmm. So my my family is from Puglia, which is Barry, which is very, not very many people know about, not many people go. It's where the Achilles tendon is of the boot, right? It's very gotcha. south on the other side. And it's, but it, it's the fish there's to die for. Excellent. Uh, but anyway, now I'm hungry. <laughs> so. Well, I'll mention one last one. Uh, somebody feed Phil. The, oh, the, yeah. Phil was the producer from Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah. The, uh, and the showrunner. And he, um, 
he goes around all kinds of places. The guy like dances when he's eating. It's he's awesome. It's it's awesome to he's watch. He's awesome. I love the bear. Um, what are you seeing that on Hulu? Huge fan of Ratatouille, the movie. I oh, can yeah. watch with my kids. So our last meal we go to is to this really classic French restaurant, and he makes ratatouille for me. <coughs> and, and that is like the French omelet, not to get off on a geek thing here about food. Sure. But to make a really good ratatouille is very difficult to do. On yeah. Tell us about your trip, Keith. Yeah, yeah, it was good. You know, we, we um, <coughs> you know, Yona and I work quite a bit, and this is our going away to reconnect and celebrate our wedding anniversary and as i tell people all the time if we don't do this every year we won't have a 39th year because she'll finally get tired of me <coughs> and and we will not be able to say we've been married for 39 years working together for 37 years but it's like going home right for us it's like going home and and you know and this trip was a little extra special because our french friends finally after 12 to 13 years felt comfortable enough to introduce us to their local restaurateurs hmm. right and it was really cool we got to really see this firsthand uh on it so it was a lot it was a lot of fun favorite um, part of the trip oh this is going to be really really um it, this is the favorite part of the trip is holding my wife's hand and spending time with her Really, my favorite part of the trip. Favorite part of the trip at Saint Martin. You know, that's very romantic it's, it's and very being, touching. I appreciate it's, that. It's being it's being with Yona. Uh, yeah, you know, the swimming, the eating. It, it's it's I it's it is true. Spending time with Yona is my favorite part of the trip, and you know, it's it's great food. If you like to eat, it's great food. We like the sun, so it's just work. It works out. It's really nice. It's awesome. You actually, actually, I'll tell you, favorite part of the trip, we did something different um, this year. Um, so every time we go, we try to do something different. We went to a different island called Saba, or Saba, depending on how you, how you pronounce it. And it's the tallest point in the Netherlands. It's a Dutch-owned island. And it's, there's a, a hike, a 4,000-foot hike in one and a half miles. And That's a lot two, of elevation. Us two crazy old people decided to go hike this they fly in it's the shortest airport commercial airport in the world they fly you in and we hiked all the way up to the top and hiked all the way back down with a bunch of six other very young californian kids hmm. and we beat them up and beat them down so maybe that was the best part Keith of the trip. Keith Smith, Jonas Smith, little troopers. competitive, a little bit competitive. Phil McChesney, Jesse Rutherford, supervisor of Nelson County. Hello, thank you for watching. Counselor Lloyd Snook. Hello, Michael Guthrie. Hello, Neil Williams. Thank you, Michael. Chico. We love you, Neil. Andre Xavier, thank you, Neil. Brandon Harrop. I believe on vacation. Ellie Tucker, Trip Stewart, the prolific investor. Andy Zeman, the talented broker. Ray Cadell. Just to name a few, Seth Liske, uh, the Stantonian real estate investor, and Donna Patton, a few names we're rattling off that are watching the program. Gentlemen, what kind of market are we in right now? A strong one. I mean, it's we're still at the halfway marker, basically, of the year. Yeah. I mean, it's been, up to this point, I think, a really good year. Um, I know we've stayed busy with our mortgage lending work and uh, among other types of work, but, uh, we're, I mean, the VAs, we're doing, I've got eight or nine VAs in my pipeline all the time. We're going to talk about probably a little bit later, the most challenging things you're seeing now. Is this market a little bit different than last year from sure. your perspective? But in my Bob Barker, is that what we're calling these? Bob, Bob Barker. Barker. Bob Barker card. I did a little numbers, quick numbers this morning. So we're about, you know, 10 days away from the end of the month. Uh, 2024, car footprint, year to date. Um, so that's from 01124 to 621. 24, this is all types of property. This is attached, detached condos, and it includes new construction. So at the moment, um, they have sold and closed 1,604, eight days with the average on market. And, and we're going to talk about 2021 here in a minute. Uh, but there's 630 impending. And let's remember that number, that 630 impending. Right. Last year, same time frame, was 1,668. So we're approximately about 4% off or 64 transactions. So with 630 pending in the next 10 days, I'm pretty sure we're going to either match or exceed 
the amount of transactions. And we did the end of the quarter of last year. We, Jerry, we were talking about that we were thinking maybe it might be a little bit below. And it is um, going to probably be above. Here's the numbers end of it. 460 is the median sales price, so that's everything across the board. Last year it was 430, so that's 4.5 percent increase. So the last time we were in about 1,600 transactions was 2017. Sales price was 287, so we're 46 percent up mm. from that. That tracks. The biggest transaction year was 2020. Hold on a second. 2021. Yeah. Peak COVID. Two, exactly, 2,306. So we're roughly at the moment about 36% off. I think, I think we're going to probably be somewhere in the 32, 33% once we get towards the end of the month. Um, but we're or a up, third off peak COVID? Roughly, roughly a third, right? Makes sense, though. That's a once in a generation market. And, uh, but compare that number to 2019. So 2019, I do not have 2019. You would have to X the number I don't have. How about 2018? I got 17. What's 2017? <laughs> 16, uh, 1,647. So 16 and 17. So we've been talking about this for a while, mm -hmm. right? This market, as far as volume goes, feels like a 16, 17 market more than, than a 19. 19, I think we were a little bit higher. I can look at that real quick. It's a more aggressive market, though. Very much so. What is uh, that? Put that in perspective. I mean, it, the competition is fierce. We still ha don't have enough inventory for all the buyers. Um, I mean, and we're seeing a lot of non-owner-occupied bu buyers uh, buying in. I mean, I've got out-of-state investors hiring, uh, hiring us to do diligence appraisals uh, on, you know, things they're putting into their portfolio, and they're buying two or three of them at a time. Damn. So, but and, I mean, and rents converting are them to what? Rentals? Just keeping them as long-term rentals. You know, they're, they're looking at the, t they have a 10-year game, basically, and they you know, they'll probably offload them in about eight to 10 years, depending on it. And if rents stay as high as they are, then... They probably hold. Oh, yeah. So you asked me what, what I like the most about the trip, and, and truly it's holding Jonas hand and spending time with her. What I really love about it is all the people you meet. Okay. And you meet all different walks of life, uh, different countries, but particularly on the American side, there's usually a couple of questions everybody asks each other, right? Where are you from? Yeah. What are you drinking? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd ask that question. Woody, you might ask that question. Probably. <laughs> Actually, there's a version of that. Where you're from, where you're staying. Okay. How long have you been coming to the island? Okay. What's your favorite restaurant, which is kind of the, the, the drinking end of it. And then there's always the question, so what do you do? We talk more real estate for two weeks. It's like show after show after show after show. And, and we're very blessed. We end up making great connections. We already did a couple of referrals from around the country, back and forth. So nice. we're talking to people and refer them out to folks out in California, Arizona. But the reason I wanted to do these numbers this morning and, and really have this conversation with you today, a lot of the bigger markets are not seeing these gains. No, they're not. They, they're seeing gains in numbers, but their volume's plummeting. Yeah plummeting down people want to be here i mean charlottesville is a wonderful place to be and you have like phoenix uh, i was talking to somebody in phoenix you and i talk about this all the time so the black black rock or whatever the what's the name of blackstone the, blackstone yeah black rock my wife's former employer Lori fincham the beautiful Lori fincham woody fincham's uh, better half said julia childs is one that woody fincham has an appreciation for. yeah we can't we can't talk about food without talking about uh, uh saint julia She's jonah and i tried julia some, childs thank you uh laurie fincham jonah and i tried to cook through her book the joy of cooking didn't go so far yeah laurie reminded me just a few minutes ago my favorite stuff to cook is vichy soie, which is potato leek soup yep and uh coca bomb coca bomb wow chicken with red sauce so which is very simple yeah but extremely hard it's like a martini it's very hard to make yeah, to do it right, it really is. What's the meal of choice? Uh, what, I, what do I like to eat? If you had anything you could pick. Lori um, learned how to make my mom's vegetables, beef soup, and also her potato stew, 
And they're both, you know, anytime I have it, I think of my mom. So, and that's where my love of food comes from, is from my mom. Uh, she's from a big family, farm family, and, you know, she, she was always a good cook, and her, her mother as well. Uh, so, you know, I think of them, you know, because of that. And, you know, it's, it's really cool that she learned how to do that. So that followed with a three-ounce pour of Pappy, <laughs> age 10, 15 years. If you can get your hands on it, you sure. can find it. Yeah. Would that set you back about fifteen hundred to get something like that? Uh, well, if you uh, seven fifty, if you can win the lottery for the uh, Virginia ABC, it's about four hundred bucks. To yeah, get yeah, twenty three. That's challenging though. Yeah, that's the only way I'm going to pay that much for it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but how about uh, off market? Is it not off market? The secondary market is. Yeah, it's the secondary black market, as we have to call it here in Virginia, because it's actually illegal to sell them. It's like fifteen hundred, right? Uh, at least twenty three can. I've seen it as high as nine thousand dollars. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious! Uh, Holly Foster watching in Henrico. She says on YouTube, Keith looks very relaxed, very <laughs> tan. <laughs> Welcome back, Keith Smith. Been yeah. away yeah. myself and only catching the twelve thirty show at night before I go to sleep. But she's happy to have you back. Thank on you. her computer monitor in Henrico. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm uh, it's. Uh, we still got the kind of vibe going yet. But uh, my phone did start ringing at seven thirty this morning. So. Uh, that's a good thing or a bad thing. Depending. Real estate, oh, right? Pardon? It's real, it's estate. real estate. That's yeah. a very good thing. <laughs> well, it was a problem, so <laughs> but we fixed it on the right on the on the right end. So you wanted to look at nineteen, right? Just just out of curiosity. Uh, no, just out of curiosity. Out of curiosity. I, I, I'd like to see how this market compares volume wise to nineteen, because your colleagues can still make a fantastic living because the price point per unit is astronomically higher. Five years. Uh, today versus five years. All righty. So same setup, right? Car footprint. All the product types attached. Condos, new construction. There was 1892. So we're at 1604. There was 1892. This is year to date. This is today. So we're not counting the last 10 days out there. Median sales price was 309 versus 460. So I can't do the math that quickly. But I can do it. I've got a little calculator that will tell me what the percentage difference Good is. Good morning to you, Johnny Ornalis. Good possible. Hey, Johnny. Johnny, you're on my call list today, brother. He says, morning, gentlemen. He's watching the program right now. Get cracking 2019 data. Jamie Turner, hello. The Gordonsville real estate investor repping the pep and call pepper right now. Yeah, so we're, 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 we are we're we are Thirty nine point two seven one seven eight one five three four four six percent. We'll call it forty percent for the talk show above medium pr sales price than we were two thousand and nineteen. Wow! But the volume forty six percent. We're up four. Excuse me. No, I apologize. Forty percent. My my apologies. In five years, values have increased forty percent. Forty seventeen was forty six. So between seventeen and nineteen, we jumped. 6% mm. difference. So there was a huge jump between 19. That's the reason you wanted to look at it. But the volume was closer to uh, 1892 versus 1604. So I think we're going to settle out with 630 impending in 10 days. My suspicion is, is we're probably going to be somewhere uh, north of 1700 transactions, which will beat last year's Ned Galloway watching on LinkedIn hey, welcome hey. back Keith yeah yeah Ned thank you for covering brother look at that tan Keith he says no he didn't say <laughs> no he <laughs> said look at that tan with three exclamation points I'm literally <laughs> yeah. you should you should the guy's wearing uh, some uh, bottom huggers for shorts over here like he's at St. Martin's over there <laughs> showing a little thigh I don't know if we want to go to the studio camera and, and show him what he's got over there are those sandals you're wearing Keith Smith this might be uh, the most relaxed, chill. relaxed attire I've ever seen for the distinguished gentleman. Can we show him? Is his new moniker not the distinguished gentleman? Is it now the island gentleman? Let's just get through this show. This weekend, we'll, at, weekend at Bernie's over here? <laughs> no. Hey, Bernie, weekend at Bernie's involved the dead guy. I was we're joking. Not, we're not going to do I'm that. I'm effing joking. He, uh, he brought some of the And no Caribbean. politics, okay? I said no <laughs> politics on the show. Uh, you brought a little bit of the Caribbean back with you, I think. I, Oh, the heat. It is, it is oh actually gosh. hotter here than back there. Yeah. Oh, wait till you see this weekend. Yeah, it's hot. We got here. a heat index so, over, a C, over a C note this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have that 12 to 15 mile an hour trade winds coming off. Yeah, there. I was going to say, when we're down in the Caribbean, it's always it's hot and humid, but you've got the, it's got always the got a breeze. Winds. Yeah, you know, I'm very blessed and, and, and lucky 
to be able to do this a couple of times a year. And, um, you know, it's, it's important to spend time with, with Yona. It's very important. But it's really good. We get to meet people and family and friends, and it's a lot of fun. But really, you know, it's amazing. You walk down the beach and you start talking to people, and it always gets to real estate. You it's guys had a lot of big-time news uh, happen while you were gone, Keith Smith. Yeah, I tried to stay away from watching it. Um, I made a commitment to Yona that I would keep my phone off. Um, I did, but there's all kinds of news floating around. So if you want to, I'm probably not read in, read up enough on it. But if you want to kick off on something, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can fake my way around it. Where do we begin? Swan and Noah goes under contract, the three and a half million dollar asking price, 235 yeah. acres, pretty darn close to Western Amarillo High School. The chitter chatter in my circles are you're going to see half acre, acre plus lots. On, uh, on that property, you're looking at arguably what could be one of the largest developments that's going to come to market in the very near future. The chatter has the folks behind Old Trail as the buyers. <coughs> we also have the Lewis Mountain property yep. that was purchased by Evergreen. Yep. Uh, the Logan Foster young agent who's got bright upside, Luke Cole, yeah. had that listing. One million out of the gates, $835,000 close price. Curious to see if a posh single family detached house goes on that property or if it's truly up zone. We had Richard Price and Roger yep. Boisonet on this show to talk about the Woolen Mills project that Roger's doing. This may be the first up zone project since the new zoning ordinance. Roger and Richard's yeah, project. I, I, I can I can tell you it is. Probably, I, yeah. I can tell, I know for a fact this will, it is. And, and they t did a master class on what this process has been like yeah. for them, sitting in your chairs right there. Yeah, we've spent a lot of time with the zoning uh, officials in Charlottesville. We've had several um, files that we're working on that have the new um, multi-use uh, so how you, designation. So how are you evaluating those? Well, there haven't been many sales, and the ones that have occurred are selling at about what they were selling at before the change. So no, until we actually have some absorption in the market. That's what, that's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. So is this, is this? Well, I can give you a little perspective on that. As of last week. My sandals fell, fell off. Oh, I've got to put them back I'm on. I'm not even wearing my sandals right now. <laughs> As of last week, only 15 teams have approached the city to pursue projects under the new zoning ordinance. Yeah, so, and of those 15, I was told only four are legitimate. Yeah. Hmm. So this thing has been in the works for years. And as of right now, we only have four legit projects. So a couple things going on here. One is what Woody just said. So unless you're doing this in cash, right, getting money to go ahead and do this is going to be difficult because Woody can't comp it out because it hasn't been done. So the first couple of transactions are generally yeah. people that are cashing in. They're using cash to go ahead and do the transaction. The other thing that's going on, and, and hats off to, to Roger, um, nobody wants to be the first one to go through the brain damage of <laughs> working with, with the county, uh, with the city. The only reason I know a little bit about this, we're working with Nicole Scro, meaning the land trust, to do an affordable housing version of it. And I will tell you... Um, oh, the title attorney? Nicole? Nicole, yeah. yeah, oh, she, yeah. She's awesome. She's a developer, too. And she closed the business transaction we were a part of. She was a pro's pro and representing uh, the seller of that transaction, Chris Fairchild, your friend watching the program. Hey, right Chris. Now. The, um, <clears throat> so we, we are projecting, just to put a perspective on it, between, because what you have to do now, because it's over three, it's a full site plan process. We're projecting about two years before we can actually sell something. So between acquisition, Going through the... The risk on that is obscene. Yeah. The, the, that's exactly right. I mean, who would do that? And, and we've been talking about this. This is about a two to five year process. You've got to have to get a couple of these things to go through before they start kind of picking up tempo a little bit so you can evaluate, right. evaluate them. Um, now, on the land trust side, it's even harder because, you know, we're doing, you know, the, the value of the land is obviously taken out, so it becomes a little bit more difficult. But um, yeah, so you know, hats off to Roger. The the the, the people that, that do this first are, are really the superheroes. Oh, and you know how Roger's doing it, right? Did you watch the show? I did not watch. Oh the my show. god! I think was, I was gone when that, that was, happened. Roger has owns the land in Woolen Mills. Yeah, he's chopping it up into four lots. Correct. He's taking one of the one of the four parcels, selling it to Richard, the architect. Yes. Under market value, 
Uh, as, and he's doing that so Richard does not charge for his architectural services. He's partnered with the builder, mm -hmm. selling that to the builder under market value so the builder doesn't charge for his services. Then he's um, utilizing uh, the house, keeping the house in play. Um, so he, that project becomes a little bit easier by keeping the existing structure there. Right. Um, and he's going to build 1,500 to 1,600 square foot new houses with an unfinished basement. Mm -hmm. What do you think the come to market price point is on? And when do you think they are available for purchase? Well, knowing Roger, there's probably going to be some green tech in the properties. Um, they'll be on the upper end, I, I would think, for that size of property. But 1,500 square foot in Willow Mills with an unfinished basement. How much land? Postage stamp. Yeah, it's a little Go small ahead. lot. Uh, probably going to have an eight in front of it. High sixes. Yeah. High sixes. That's actually not a bad number. And when do you think okay. they come to market? Oh, probably two years from now. A year and change from now. Yeah. Do you think? That I know for a fact. Yeah. High sixes. Yeah, yeah. And he's ahead of the curve. He's first? He's ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you, but you're 100% right. There's only one or two really legitimate projects that are going through the process. Because what happens is when everybody starts taking a look at that, and we talked about this, you, this, is, um, this is not property owner friendly this process so if you if you wanted to try to do this yourself you really can't you've got to structure it the way roger structured it. it's very smart so what he's doing is he's, he's bringing everything entitled right he's probably doing the horizontal work the development work i haven't spoken to roger about this but you should get him on the show yeah so we would we would do the he would do the horizontal work and then then the builder would then build build on build on top of it it's how we're doing it with nicole nicole is delivering us finished lots and then we're going to build the land trust is going to build where are they at part it's so it's over um you know i don't think we're quite done with the contract and okay. the feasibility study period stuff so i'm going to kind of leave that out a yeah, little bit yeah i don't blame you um but it is it's in the city for sure um let's say it's within walking distance to everything that you want to get to on it um well, so, she did two fantastic homes right over there at Woolen Mills by the storage uh, sheds. Yeah. So I, I don't, we're not quite done with the feasibility studies and all this stuff, so I don't, I don't want to sure. cross. So she is an attorney after all, so I, I do want to. That's something we'll talk about with... Uh, <laughs> she'll, she'll get mad at me and, and text me. Developer Bo Carrington on Tuesday. Good, good. Uh, good this people. very topic right here. Bo's good people. Uh, so what do you guys make of what we've seen so far from, it's no longer the DZO, it's now the NZO, Richard corrected me, the new zoning ordinance. It's not a draft anymore, it's the new zoning ordinance. Right. Have we seen anything of merit? What was that last part, I'm sorry? Have we seen anything of tangible, tangibility, merit, any proof of performance? Any, uh, any affordability from potential oh, increased there's no. How is there going to be affordability with that? You're just empowering people that have the means to make more money. The, the, Which is, that's capitalism. There's nothing wrong with it. But Bingo. The first one will be the land trust one okay. that we, we run through because we're going to be capitalizing on the affordability bonus density that you get on that. But it's very difficult. I mean, it's, it's the, the sewer and water and sewer connection, the sidewalks you have to do, there's erosion control. The, the amount of site work that's required on those is extremely expensive. Let's uh, put in perspective the tap, just connecting the water. What are you talking, 19K? That's about right, I think. Th that's about right. But that's only the part of it, though. Because now you have to do a bond for that amount. Right, and they don't give you your bond money back, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that closed uh, Judah's dad's development company, right, Judah? Yeah, I, uh, uh, we're still waiting for the ones on Nassau Street back from 2019. How so. long did it take for your dad to get the bond money back? He has not gotten it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it, they, they take. How it. is that legal? I'm sure it's not, but you know. <clears throat> you're basically saying, how do you go toe to toe with the city? So they're allowed, man, I'll get myself into trouble here. It's just my first show and I'm going to be in trouble already. So they're allowed to constantly ask for things, right? And then you have to solve these problems. And then they don't tell you all the, prob all the things that they need until they have different departments need different things and one department doesn't talk to the other department. 
if they really, 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 really want to impact affordable housing in the city of Charlottesville, what they should do is what happened in Portland and Seattle is streamline the red tape. The, what, 25% of new construction is basically red tape. And what they've done in that is if you're doing a, an affordable housing project, let's say the land trust, we get one person that's attached from the city, that's attached to the project, who walks everything through. And sometimes what happens is you're working with Woody, and we're now six months into this, and Woody takes another job. Yep. And guess what happens? All your institutional knowledge has walked out the door. And we go all the way back to number one, and then we have to keep on doing it. So when you have somebody walk it through, it, 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 helps, it helps a lot. But this conversation came up on the beach all the time. You know, how, how are we going to increase inventory, right? And, you know, how we're going to bring stabilization to the housing market. And, you know, everybody that I was talking to on, and these are all from all over parts of the country, um, is we need more. And it's just, you know, when, you, when it takes two years, it's going to take two years to produce six affordable housing units. Let that sink in. It's going to take <coughs> two years from today to go through the process, do the horizontal work, do the vertical work, and put affordable housing buyers in there. How about our, uh, how about, and Neil Williamson, I'll get to your comment. Kevin Yancey, I'll get to, to your comment here. Local newspaper uh, reporter watching the program right now. How about the... Uh, Criteria: If you're doing a project that has nine units or more, was it 10% of the project has to be affordable, AMI. tied to 60% AMI for Nobody's 99 gonna, years? Yeah, and the reason the land trust works so great because we have we do that. It's 99. A, it, we do years. a 99 years, but nobody's going to do if if the land trust is struggling to put together a six. This is a vacant lot, folks. <laughs> this is a vacant lot. This doesn't even have a house on it is we're gonna take probably two years to produce six units, something's wrong, coach. And, and that's what needs to figure out a way to get fixed. If you can streamline that process down, um, and, and you know, it, if it was if it was perhaps the twelve thirty show, and I, it's not the twelve thirty show, it's the Keith Smith show. I would interject by saying, "Well, thank God is, you're not going to do that." This is okay. You're right. I'll take it. But go ahead and do it. No, I mean, <laughs> no, go is, do it. Go do this it. This is why you don't listen to you don't you don't you know succumb to the influence of activists. You actually listen to true true professionals yeah. prior to po p passing policy. And, well, the and, policy and itself. These folks all along have said this was. I mean, Neil Williamson said this was ridiculous. Yeah. So the. So we've been talking about this for a while. There's two sides of the coin, right? There's the policy, there's the zoning, right? But now there's the implementation of it. And if you remember shows back, I kept on saying, I, great, zoning's one thing, you know, the, the, you can get your count up, that's great. Uh, but what is it gonna look like and what is it gonna take to go ahead and do that? And it is, anything over three is just a full blown out, you might as well just think as you're building 300 units. It's just, it's just way too much red tape to produce six affordable housing units. El, El Presidente of the Free Enterprise Forum, Neil Williamson. Thank you, Neil. Says, the inclusionary zoning measures mandated in the new zoning ordinance will freeze large new developments. Yeah. The buyout is entirely too high. Yeah. Well, it's just not going to happen, right? And then what's going to happen... And we talked about this. If anybody thought that this thing gets passed, there's going to be 50,000 new houses here. That, or uh, you know, it, it was done with a lot of love and, and, and intended yep. in it. And, you know, but, you know, it's the old Ronald Reagan quote, you know. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. You know, the, <laughs> unintended, beautiful. the unintended consequences to this, I think, is, is going to work exactly in the reverse, unfortunately. So what will happen? Uh, there's, there's a pretty neat project that PHA is doing on Cherry. Um, 501 Cherry, so you know, but that's going through the through the process uh, on it, and we'll see if that that has a, a pretty big impact or not. Uh, but at the end of the day, in order to produce any affordable housing units, it's going to have to be a nonprofit that's going to do it. But but just think about this: so these units that we're going to build, right? So I we can't sell them just to, as an appraiser's perspective. We can't sell them today's AMI for much over 200 to 225. How's that going to work? What, so that's what happens. This is where I go knock on doors and raise money because guess how much it's going to cost us to build them? Uh, I would imagine more than that. About 500 yeah. per unit. Four, 450 to 500. That's in today's dollars. 
That's between the horizontal acquisition and the vertical construction to move in there. So the math difference between the two, we got to go out and find subsidy subsidy for. So the good news about two years is I got a little bit more time to find money. The bad news is we're going to wait two years to build six units. Any, anything you want to throw into there, Woody Fincham? It's a shame that they won't make a streamlined process for nonprofits that, like what you guys are doing. You know, it would it would really help you. Well, I, I get that. Um, the pushback, though, uh, that I saw out west, the for profit guys were like, "Well, hold it, time." Yeah, out. how's their pl that playing field yeah. different than our playing field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the difference is is that they're building this thing at a net loss. They're having to get donation money to do it to solve a problem that the city was trying to solve in the beginning. But yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't the for profit just playing devil, devil's advocate, sake of a talk show with the professor Woody Fincham? Wouldn't the for profit guys say they're uh, cannibalizing potential market share from us, and they're doing it in a way that gives them uh, ha gives them opportunities and and shortcuts and advantages that we don't have? This is more for a developer to answer, but my perspective on it would be this: There's never going to be any projects in Charlottesville large enough, at least in the next few years, that's really going to attract any of the substantially large development companies and builders. And why is that? There's just no scale to it. And know? why is that? They, I mean, the, uh, the diminishing return of cost gets factored in because when you have a lot of units, things get cheaper. I'm going to get into trouble with my dear friend, Ned. Ned Galloway's watching? Um, Ned Galloway? You know, we, the good news is that I think they're starting to have this conversation at the dais in Albemarle County, but the development areas need to grow. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the, the, the set aside development areas are not. You doing a little puppy thing? I mean, I, mean, I don't agree with that, but I, I'm listening. I'm willing to listen. You don't. You don't agree. I don't agree with that. No. That the development areas. I need do to not grow. agree that the development areas should grow. Really? Have you Have you seen? Uh, has anyone been around Crozet recently? Yeah. It is an absolute cluster duck, and the folks that live and I said quack quack cluster duck. The folks that live in Crozet are like enough already. They're beyond pissed off. <clears throat> when it comes to the density that's happened. Their schools, their kids are learning in trailers. They're sitting in traffic. They have to build another school. They're not close to doing that. The quality of life in Crozet 10 years ago, 15 years ago versus now is completely different. Talk to anyone that lives in Crozet and they're like, stop it already. Yeah, you, Lake Monticello will have the same same. I'm sure we got to listen to our taxpayers. So, okay, got it. Our voters. Got it. So if, if everybody feels that we're in a housing crisis and there's, there needs to be affordable housing. Let's assume that that's the case. How's that going to happen, Coach? Well, Swatanoa, this project we should highlight, 235 acres, just one under contract. The asking what do you price think, was 3.5 million. That's not going to be affordable. What do you affordable. think the price points of those houses are going to be? It's going to start with a six and it's going to climb well over a million. But as we know, any new housing alleviates stress on the housing ecosystem. Any supply whatsoever. There you go. So, so that, that's the point. I'm making about expanding the the growth area. It it it, it increases, and, and it I just, doesn't have to happen. I just know this, Jerry, because I was talking to somebody. Crozet is a designated growth area. Crozet I, I is a that. growth area. How can we put more housing in Crozet? So let me try it a different. There's way. two ways into Crozet. Uh, how do you feel about the urban ring? Um, I think the urban ring is pretty darn close to capacity. And as Diantha McKeel on this set said this, until the urban ring is at capacity, how do we consider expanding the development area? She, exact words. Yeah, she but sat that, next to you and said that. But that conversation, he's playing, he's playing tennis here. <laughs> back and forth. Welcome back, Keith Smith. <laughs> that, but that conversation is starting to happen at the board level about, you know, it didn't get shut down right away. And Neil reported on that. Uh, he sent a tweet, and he, Neil's watching right now. He, he did a tweet from okay, the meeting, me which we're referencing. Yeah, yeah. So that, that conversation... Neil, that tweet continues to ring in infamy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it, but it's happening. But, you know, so look, the, the, all you got to do is look at the numbers. The, the, at the one, and you know this, we'll get Woody into the conversation, right? The product type that has been more stable in the last 12 to 24 months would be single family detached or townhomes. I'm talking yeah. about wh which one which one is more stable? Uh, probably townhomes. Yeah. You think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Why are you saying that? Well, I mean, if you're going to if you want to buy at the lowest rung in the market right now, you're going to have to buy a townhome, right? Yes. Uh, and, and what are we talking? 400 grand to even start talking this conversation in, in Charlottesville and in Albemarle? Um, I mean, when you get over to the valley, you can find some in the high twos, 
but you're going to live in some place like Grottos or you know uh, those places, which are wonderful communities. They're just you know if you're commuting to Charlottesville, it's every a day, drive. It's, it's a long ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I sort of agree with Keith on this in the sense that I think that you know it's supply and demand. There's such a limited amount of supply of land and places where you can build. If you the only way to normalize pricing is to to have more of it. However. We have a lot of investors right now that are going to buy. If it, things become available, they're going to snatch it up. You should put that in perspective. In fact, Kevin Yancey in Waynesboro says, how about three corporations owning two to 300,000 homes nationwide that were converted from single-family homes strictly to rental for pure profit? Yep. You have a client base, not saying that it's major corporations like this, but you're seeing some of this deal flow. Oh, absolutely. But uh, not, not, at, not at those huge numbers. And he's talking about like Phoenix and He's talking and like Nashville. Blackstone and Blackrock. Yeah, Rock Blackstone right just yeah. had like a 200-unit subdivision in Oklahoma. That, that it, and it's an entire rental community, like every unit in there. And they're holding it for the long term because, I mean, their return on the rent's ridiculous right now. Right. It's genius. It's genius. Put in perspective what you're seeing. Um, it's just folks that are uh, looking to buy um, in the upzoned areas, you know, where we're, what is it, um, CX4? Three and CX five, I believe, with the zoning. I'm probably wrong because I don't have it right here in front of me. But um, you know, the folks are buying those with hopes to add additional units. Uh, that zoning also allows you to have mixed use, so you can actually have some commercial with it. Um, but we're, I haven't seen anything on the, the taking advantage of that yet. Um, I don't know. We've had probably a five or six deals now where we've worked on where uh, there was ho they were buying it with hope that it, they could do something more. Um, uh, more density related with the property. Uh, Jamie yeah. Turner, we got to make sure we put uh, make a mention of this. He's asking Woody Fincham specifically the process of becoming an appraiser. Oh wow, cool. Um, <laughs> he says, "Can you ask Woody the process to become an appraiser?" He's gone over it before, but would love to hear it again. So we should save that. Uh, I know you have something to say on this topic. I'm just trying to keep the conversation. Yeah, going. yeah, got yeah. it. So back on the attached. So are you, I pull Albemarle County because Albemarle County has 80 or 90 percent of the attached products. So 2024, this is new construction. This is everything. There was 236 sales to date, year to date. Median sales price was 436. Last year, same product type, same county, same timeline. There was 263 sold. Does anyone want to guess what the median sales price was? What do you pitch up? 2023. This know. year, 436. Probably 400. 436. Same. Same exact number. Wow. So that's because there, there was all these subdivisions that got approved, and a lot of it is new construction to go ahead and do that. But if you group everything in, we're four and a half percent up higher, which includes a single family detached. So if I went and, and did the single family detached numbers, I guarantee you the percentage jump on that is much higher. Uh, Joe Meyer having some fun. Good morning, gentlemen. And Woody. Oh. <laughs> Joe, that's Woody's oh. boy. Yeah, I love Joe. He's that's awesome. Woody's boy. I'd rather not be a gentleman because Joe's not a gentleman either. Where's Joe watching? Uh, out of Louisiana. There we go. Joe, we love when you watch the program. We love the uh, humor you add to the comment section. Some uh, good, a good fisherman and uh, loves good food. If you're ever in New Orleans, he's the guy to take you around. Randy O'Neill watching the program. James Watson, your brother-in-law. Hello, hey. Corbin Snow. Welcome to the show. Thank you for watching the program. Rob Neal watching the show. Uh, the who's who of Charlottesville on the program right now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm seeing elected officials from four different jurisdictions watching Real Talk with Keith Smith right now. Hey. Do we talk Swananella? Do you want to do some uh, crystal ball projections or some cocktail hour conversations? We're just missing the cocktail. What, uh, what jurisdiction does that fall under? That is, that's Augusta, right? That's Augusta. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Augusta, Augusta. Is okay. pr they're pretty easy to work with, at least from what I've seen on my end. Um, I'm sure, like any municipality, they've got their, their, their speed bumps, too. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little mixed on it, to be honest with you. I hope they don't do a huge density up there, just because it kind of takes away from the bucolic nature of where it is. 236 acres in Afton. Yeah, so... <clears throat> $3.5 million ask, under contract right now. Yeah. It, it's, That's a lot of rooftops. Look, the, the views are off the charts. Oh, my God. Uh, it's going to be... That's a mountain. Yeah, I think the numbers that you quoted are going to be light. What do you mean? 800, 
I think you're going to be looking somewhere north of a million when oh. this is all on, st- e- on the entry. They're going to have to uh, raise by it. the time it's done. My God, it they got to what they have to go through to develop that and build on it. We'll be talking about this as long as you'll have me for another two or three years, right? Before we even see anything come come out of the ground. Would Mark- you call that Central Virginia? Ooh, that's Central I, Virginia, right? It's right on the edge of the Shenandoah Valley, so no, I don't. I wouldn't really consider it. I think once you get over the mountain range, you're you're, I, you're in the a valley. valley. It's, yeah. You I, say that's the valley. That's I, right on the cusp, right? Somebody who's lived there needs to answer that oh, question. Kevin Yancey, that's a great question for you. John Blair, that's a great question for you. What kind of views do they have off of the property? Um, pretty sick views. Yeah, yeah. 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 I so played it, some it, golf there. They're pretty sick views. They, anybody building that development would be crazy not to capitalize on that one fact. You know, panoramic views of That's of what I'm trying to tell you. The numbers yeah, on It's going to be a second gonna, home community for a lot of people. Oh, control. you think it will be a second home community? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're going to get away for the weekend. And the question becomes, do they keep the golf course? Do they keep no, the I don't house? think the golf course is staying. Yeah, got it. Because they need it for the house. Exactly. Well, Single go- family golf detached, detached Albemarle County. And the County. golf course was a goat track. <laughs> it was a goat track. Albemarle County, single family detached, year to date, 24, 445 units sold, year to date, 660 is the median sales price. This is everything, right? New construction and, and existing. 23, 449, so 469, so we're a little bit down, but the number was 615. So my point we're making is the attached product in Albemarle County stabilized. Yeah. Right, because a lot of it all of a sudden started coming to market that started four, five, six years ago. It just happened to be timed right. Supply and demand. There you go. And uh, on the single family detached, we're up 45, if I'm doing the math right, 45 grand year over year. Median prices, I'm sure, once we take a look at it a little bit harder. But anyway, there you go. What do you think of that, Woody Fitcher? I mean, it tracks. I mean, with all the data that we run in our office, um, I mean, we're, we're doing a ton of attached homes. Um, we do a lot of work for Gray Fox Mortgage, uh, Todd Jenkins and, and his team over there, and uh, they, they work with uh, Greenwood. And uh, I've got a deal going with Greenwood, and, and Todd's doing a great job for us. Yeah, Todd's wonderful. I've known Todd ever since he was a baby loan officer like 20-some years ago. Uh, I was a baby appraiser at the same time. Got to uh, answer the question on how to become an appraiser. Oh, uh, And Wahoo89, watching on YouTube, he says, I grew up in Rockbridge County, go who's, and he's watching from, is it Gallatin, Tennessee? Oh, right wow. now. Gallatin. Who is this? I'm watching sorry? Wahoo89 is oh, his handle on YouTube. Gotcha. Yeah, I well, okay, yeah, I don't know where that is in Tennessee. Do you want to highlight the appraisal process? Yeah, it's, appraisal? it's long and boring, but I'll, uh, I'll try to make it succinct. So becoming an appraiser is very difficult because it's still mired in an old apprenticeship type system, uh, which is a good thing because you need to have real world experience before you start you know, working uh, on appraisal work, particularly for lenders. But uh, you, know, you have to find a mentor. And finding a mentor is very difficult because... You're training your competition. Exactly. Um, plus appraisers are not the most personable people. Oh, Woody Fitchum is a gem. Woody, Woody's unique. Yeah. Like, there, there, I mean, there's more of me out there. There's a lot of folks that are doing... But, you know, we're all... Would I just get myself into trouble? No, no, no. No, not at all. Um, I, I agree with you. I mean, most appraisers are very introverted and... They, well, because they're used to working alone in front yeah, of exactly. computers. Well, and people yeah. yell at them all the time. You know, yeah. I mean, if I'm not making half of my clients mad and half of them happy, I'm probably not doing something. You're doing your right. job wrong. Yeah. 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 Um, to, uh, once you... The mentorship can come before or after, but then you've got to become a certified residential appraiser. You've got to have 200 hours mm. of classroom time. Uh, That's a lot. It is. And then if you want to be a certified general appraiser, which does commercial work and non-residential work, uh, you're looking at 300 hours. And you have to have a college degree to get your CG as well. Dang. Yeah. It's, Maybe that's you're highlighting why we have a, a shortage. I don't know that we necessarily have a shortage. We've got a lot of appraisers who have <laughs> removed themselves from the lending game because they're using appraisal management companies that are, you've essentially got like eight or nine major uh, appraisal management companies out there, and they do all the hiring for, uh, they procure appraisers for lenders across the country. And they are running an ogalopoly. I mean, they can set the market rate, and you know, proof of, the, of it here in Charlottesville, I get a much higher median fee than someone in, in Northern Virginia because there's so many appraisers in Northern Virginia. They're, I mean, they're paying them work with the wheel get 750 for. They're paying them two, three hundred dollars to do. 
And you can't do quality work at that price point. Just to tell you how, just to change gears a little bit, the impact of this, what we do or, or the impact of the internet and technology. My brother-in-law James yeah. is on a plane from Poland to here watching the show <laughs> on a plane and he's, he's, he's messaging me, great show guys. So he's on a plane from Pol from Warsaw, Poland, to here, watching the show. You're getting props from people in Tennessee, I mean, Louisiana. I mean, right I, mean now. I'm not, I mean, it's not about the show and about me. It's just the technology that yeah. you can sit in a plane. Small world, man. And it's there, getting smaller. So some insight on the Swannanoa thing. This is from Kevin Yancey, who lives in Waynesboro. He's he would know about this. He goes on Swannanoa. There are parts of that development that are split between Augusta and Nelson, mm. depending on what side of the mountain you're looking at. Well, that's an interest, that throws an interesting wrinkle in the process. He says, Delaney, Phil Delaney, who's passed away, his estate now has, uh, is managing his many, many holdings. Many of those holdings are on the market for sale now, yeah. including a fantastic piece of property on Ivy Road, uh, which Andrew Hardy has the listing. Phil Delaney, Swatanoa Castle property is actually split in all three, Augusta, Nelson, and Albemarle. No kidding. Which was put on the feed. And this is an interesting comment from the mayor of McIntyre, Bill McChesney, he says, is that Swatanoa development not against a national park? And how does that affect the development process? Hugely. So, so let me make sure I understand, because I'm, I haven't read up on this, so I just want to make sure I got I mean, it. I think you may be looking at the next big project in the area here. I, 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 let me just ask the question. Please. And, and, and make sure I heard you, because my hearing aids are, are not working right. So this development is going to be in three different jurisdictions? No, Swatanoa, the Swatanoa project, Parts of it are split between Augusta and Nelson. Okay. Now he's talking the Swannanoa Castle, which is a different property. It's Correct. in three jurisdictions, Augusta, Nelson, and Almore. So the, 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 the golf course is in two ju jurisdictions, which is going to be Parts the, of it. Yeah. 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 That, that complicates things on the magnitude that I can't explain. Uh, but if you think this is complicated, it gets even more complicated because you have to go through two separate processes two separate rezonings more than likely, two separate site plan processes, and oh, by the way, backing up to the uh, National Forest, you know, you're gonna end up, uh, you know, Army Corps of Engineers get involved in projects of this size. Yeah, regardless. that's gonna be a huge environmental study on that. The environmental um, study. I guarantee you there's something that's endangered within proximity of the property. Yeah. Well, so, like a, yeah. some caterpillars or, you know, something. Uh, so, it'll something. be something. <laughs> so this may be a great conversation for a talk show amongst three guys at the moment, but the, the, the road from this conversation to reality is extremely long, extremely expensive, and can blow up at any given, given moment. Yeah, I mean, in the end, the carrying costs to get to a finish, to start to putting finished products yeah, I, in place, there's a, you'd have to have, in I, order I, to get it, you're going to have to have a very high price point on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in the room. Kevin pushes back on Bill McChesney's comment. He says, it is not by the National Park, National Forest property. That okay. is further east, okay. down the Nelson side. So he's pushing back on what McChesney said. Irregardless. Man, I love this. We're having conversations with everybody on the internet right now. <laughs> and a guy in a plane. It's fantastic. Uh, 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 irregardless, the, the, the phase one environmental, the erosion and control, all this stuff is going to be very expensive. The way this thing is set up, um, it's, it's on a study period. Yeah, and it's. I mean, the reality is, someone's going to pay close to three and a half million dollars to this, and it may not even come to fruition. And if you're going to pay close to three and a half million dollars to this, you're going to have done some due diligence. I mean, they ought to so say how much you think that's going to cost. The due diligence, the period. No, 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 no. Timeline. If they, if how much do you think the closing price for the 235 acres is? No, the the, the the purchase price. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about what the. What do you think the due diligence cost is going to be on this? This is completely up your alley here. This is not my. No, no, no. no. I, I think you're going to nail it. This is this is not my uh, wheelhouse at all. I think you're going to nail it. I, I, I would imagine you're a ways away from you know, the, seeing the, any kind of housing here. And here's an appraisal thing. Uh, any appraiser watching will get the joke, but it's an interim use thing now. So take the property the way it sets because it's gonna, those buildings are going to be there for a, a while yet. Turn it into a horror movie set and, and lease it out to some movie studios because that hotel is freaky and scary. 
Oh, he, you're talking about uh, the late Phil Delaney's hotel atop Afton Mountain. Yeah. With that ridiculous view. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a, a was it previously a Howard Johnson? I think it was. It was, yeah. They used to actually have a Howard Johnson's. With dinner. a restaurant there as well. Real, real honest. Yeah. yeah so, so if, if that study period is anything less than six months, I'd be surprised. It's probably close to a year. It's a, probably a half a million to three quarters of a million dollars worth of work. How many houses? I don't. I, I don't. I would have to look. That's part of the problem. Because well, how much water do they have up there? I mean, how much is actually? I'm, not, I'm just. I'm just talking about. Let's go back to our conversation about the city zoning, right? Just opening up the zoning ordinances. Now you've got to open up two separate zoning ordinances, yeah. one for Nelson and one for Augusta County, and find out how much of it's in Augusta, how much is in Nelson, how is that all going to work? Are they similar? Are they similar uh, zoning ordinances? Do they have different density requirements? Anytime you have a, a project that is split between two or more jurisdictions, it is ridiculously complicated. Do we want to make any predictions? Guys, this is so fun. I'm having a great time with you guys. The band's back together, and I'm very happy. Do we have any predictions? On, I got to take a nap. Uh, you got to take a nap? <laughs> I got to take a nap. <laughs> uh, folks, it's not because of his... Uh, wisdom and experience it's no, because that hurt. <laughs> the man has not slept he he, he got in the plane right got in the 3 30 so you're morning. pretty much on a bender right now i'm on a bender whatever this is <laughs> this is this is a 60 plus plus version of a bender it's not a bender bender it's like oh my god i got in at 3 30 woke up at 5 30 and and uh, I'm on about 12 cups of coffee. Do we want to make any predictions on what is going to happen with the Lewis Mountain rancher that was listed at a million dollars that just closed at 835000 purchased by Evergreen? Well, so... Uh, the builder, so remodeler, that's, developer? Yeah, so I can, I can tell you that's, that's a pretty simple question. They're just going to go... I would say the path of least resistance, put a quarter million dollars into it and come on the market at a million, five million, six. Or... I'd have to relook at the um, the site plan and, and look everything like that. Throw a second or third unit on there. You know, if you don't disturb so many square feet. 303 Alderman Road, if you want to take a look, Woody. Thank 303 you. Alderman Road. If Just you don't disturb it. a certain percentage of the of the lot, you don't have to do erosion control, yada, yada, yada. I, 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 again, not knowing the uh, geometric geometry of everything, you know, either... Uh, you know, demo it and put three homes on there. I don't see that happening. Yeah, I think the expense to do that's a bit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, a bit, a bit thing. But Renault, very, they'll do something very similar. We saw that Spanish hacienda yeah. in Ivy. Remember, next I remember. to that lot that they were going to build on. I remember that a spec house. I remember that, and they turned that Spanish hacienda in Ivy into a beautiful but house. But here's the difference, right? Yes, but here's the difference. The, you remember? I do. No. I remember. Hello, my name is Keith. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, no, I just lost it. Thanks. No, come on, Miller. You got to get back. Oh man, I just okay. But that particular piece of property, though, you couldn't buy right. Put two or three more. Well, that would be two more homes on there. Here's the difference: if you can physically fit it on there, you can carve that up, much like Rogers doing. That's literally what Rogers doing. Right, and Roger's kind of laying the, the, the groundwork for everybody, you know, as a template to follow. Big words, template. He used another big word. Do you, so you say you're a former developer. You know, Lewis Mountain has homes that trade for a million five and up, two million dollars easy. Uh, Eight thirty-five purchase price. I can assure you this: it's not going affordable. Yeah, uh, the, the, I'm, my question on it is this: that's not an area where you're going to see. A lot of if they start doing this in that neighborhood, it's going to change the entire composition. It's a geometry of the lot. Um, I haven't looked at it, but I'm, I'm just looking at the um, if there's pictures enough, of the house. If there's enough geometry on the lot, I can tell you that that you could put, you know, an ADU, you know, a second unit in the back or or something like that. I, I just don't have the geometry and the layout. Nineteen hundred square feet. Commit? No, no. I'm talking about the the lot shape and and. Where does it back up to an alley? I just don't have that committed to memory. Point three one acres. Yeah. Um, how about eight thirty five? I have it here for you. Just yeah. The geometry is what is more important, not the size. What if you put two fifty into it? Right. Then at that point you're in 
A million eighty five. And if you can carve off. Come on, market a million four, million five, million six. New roof, new HVCs, new, new do essentially what they did with that Spanish hacienda. Yeah, yeah, but but the guys over at Evergreen are also developers, so yeah, they're yeah. going to be they're going to be looking to capitalize on the new zoning ordinance in some way. There's and a little bit of, of, of topography to the property, but um, you know it's a typical corner lot. I mean, it's a corner lot, but okay. that house sits right in the middle of it. Yeah, I mean, does it? Yeah, okay. I, so, I would almost think you'd want to rip it off. Well, you're saying raise the house. Dang. I mean, if you want to maximize what, what are they you can do for there, eight thirty-five. Uh, so, figure hundred grand to tear it down. Oh, you kidding me with the permitting? And no, no, no. I think it's hundred grand to tear it down. Yeah. I just don't think. I mean, just one yeah. man's opinion. No, I don't no, think no. This I'm is just the doing, path it's going to go. I'm doing math behind my, in yeah. my head. So you paid, you paid eight. What'd you say? Eight hundred. Eight thirty-five. Let's call it eight hundred. A hundred to tear well, no, it no, down. No, no, I got a calculator. Okay, so that's nine hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. Right. Then you've got to develop it. Let's say you could put three on it. So okay. that's probably going to be $200,000 worth of development work. So you got one, one. Okay, 935 plus 200,000. I'm with you. You got one, one, right? One, one, three, five. One, one, three, five. And then you could. Yeah, start building stuff. You got to build stuff on it. But I'm just trying to figure out what you could sell them for. And if you could sell. So you could probably get about $3 million worth of sales out of that. For three? Yeah, you, you, you sell them a million a pop? Yeah, I think on so. On 0.31? I think so, yeah. 0.1 a pop? Okay, let's call it 850. So 850. Uh, what's the building cost on that? Yeah, that's the trick. What's the building? I mean, Roger's talking about. The math's not going to work. That's what I'm saying. The math ain't going to work. Gonna, on that. You're going to have to sell them um, for 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. And you're priced out of yeah, the market. You're priced out of the market, yeah. Great. I mean, you buy a brand new single family deed. But these guys are sharp. Over oh, there. I know they are. And so they got a plan. We just don't know what it is yet. Well, that's why yeah, it's I mean, the sake of a talk show. You can, go, you can go up to 12 units on the zoning. We don't want the facts. God forbid. It's the sake of a talk show. <laughs> Bill McChesney says, it was a Howard Johnson restaurant with cottages around Ooh. it, a golf station at the U.S. 250 level. The motel on top was at one time a Holiday Inn with an Aberdeen barn restaurant in it. And in the winter, there was a small ice rink. I love when, huh. when, when this happens. What's that? It's when we're, yeah. we're past time here. Yeah, we are past time. That's good. It was easy peasy, Sunday breezy. Judah Wickhauer behind the camera. What do you think? Some closing thoughts, my friend. I'm just happy to come back on the show and, and chat, you, chat with my friends. And uh, it's always interesting. You, it's you real estate. Any, you know any friends? Yeah, I've got a couple. I'm sitting you're, you're, you're sitting with them right here. You're a lucky guy. I'm sitting with them right here. Keith Smith, so, some closing thoughts. So um, I think you're going to see at the end of a little little guesstimation here, a little crystal ball. I think you're going to see by the end of the second quarter about 1,700 transactions happen, which is going to beat this time last year. I think you're going to be holding about 460, 465 is the medium sales price. But again, to put it in perspective, um, compared to 2017, which was the last time we were around 1,700 on it, um, we're 46% up in value. That's the full car footprint. So from 2017 to now, we're about 45, 46% up in price, and we're about flat if we were back, you know, looking at 2017. Keith Smith, Woody Fincham, Woody Fincham, Keith Smith, Judah Wickhauer, online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com, wherever you get your podcasting and social media content. Click the Partners tab on the website. Look Please. at them on screen. The trusted people in this game we call life. I love Siebel Show, one hour and seven minutes. So long, everybody. That was fantastic. Thanks, guys. Woody, thank you. Thank you for the last minute filling in.